In Ecuador, the president of the National Electoral Council, Diana Tamain, announced that the ER is working on the schedule for the general elections in the country after the President Guillermo Lasso dissolved the parliament. The Russian government announced that it has extended the, green, the Black Sea Grain Deal for another two months. The UN aid representative in Sudan uh, decreed in Thursday multiple series of uh, branches of the agreement reached by the nations of so warring parties to spare civilians and civilian infrastructure and to let in a badly needed aid. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Marmarello from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We'll be with the news. Stay with us. of the National Electoral Council of Ecuador, Diana Tamay, informed that they are already working in the schedule for the general elections to be held in the country and are yet to be approved after President Guillermo Lasso dissolve the parliament. More or less we have programmed. It is not yet official. It has to be approved by the plenary of the National Electoral Council. But I do not think there will be many changes due to the time restrictions we have. And we have programmed that the second round will be on Sunday, October 15th. The second round on Sunday 15th and the first round when it is programmed. Let's see, the 90 days are united on Tuesday, August 22nd. But for the citizenship due to the custom and is, we would have to do it on Sunday. Diana Tamayn points out that during the upcoming elections, all the milestones uh, contemplated in the electoral process will be met. All the milestones contemplated in an electoral process, pre-electoral and electoral, are going to be fulfilled because it is a matter of executing the rights of the political organizations. We cannot skip any milestone, primary, internal, sub-democracy, consultative council, which we have to summon today, with anticipation before the day of the summons, which we'll do until May 24th at the latest. We have to qualify the candidacies, which implies that they have the right to file all the appeals that the candidates have proclamation or definitive candidacies, electoral campaign. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador denounced once again that the U.S. Agency for International Development is facing the is financing the opposition. My pardon. President López Obrador reiterated on Thursday that there is evidence that the agency gives money to groups that are against the Mexican government. The Trump State assured that this sponsorship is an act of interference and a violation of the country's sovereignty. For its part, the agency denied that the fund is allocated to Mexico or to any other country have a political aptitude and recalled that it has collaborated with Mexico for more than 40 years in the prevention of crime and violence that is the threatening of the rule of law, the protection and promotion of human rights, among others. The president of Colombia, Gustavo Petro, welcomed on Thursday the resumption of peace talks in Cuba between his government and the National Liberation Army. Brazil's Superior Electoral Court of failing several legislators, among them Flavio Bolsonaro, some of former President Jair Bolsonaro, for spreading false news against the current president Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva in the campaign that, in the 2022 campaign. Besides Bolsonaro, who is currently lead a senator, his colleague Mara Gabrielli and Congresswoman Carla Zambelli were fined. The fine amounts to 10,000 right Raish just over two thousand dollars for the each all for each one details the ETSE in a press release. In a radio interview on the eve of the first round of last year's election, so Gabrielli linked Lula and the Workers Party to the murder of two thousand and two of Celso Daniel, then mayor of the municipality of Santo Andre in Sao Paulo.
The Peruvian Congress has uh, reviewed a request to declare the Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador person non grata on the basis of interference in the country's internal affairs. The request was made by the right-wing deputy for the go-in country party, Patricia Chirinos, who also denounced the Mexican president for his uh, reluctance uh, to recognize the rights of the Peruvian state to exercise the pro-temper presidency of the Pacific Islands. Russia and Cuba were together in the design of the operation format of the Russian banks in the Caribbean island on the transition to pavements in rubbles between both countries. The announcement was made by R Russian Deputy Pr Minister uh, Dmitry Chernyshenkov on Thursday during the 20th meeting of the Russian Cuban Intergovernmental Commission for the Commercial, Economic, Scientific and Technical Cooperation held in Havana. Let's take a very short break now, but remember you can now follow us on our TikTok account as Sur English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates and more. Stay tuned for more news. Welcome back to From the South. The Russian government announced that it has extended the Black Sea Grain deal for another two months. The announcement was made during a press conference on Thursday by the Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Pesko, who also said there was some results in the negotiations with the participation of representatives of Turkey, Ukraine and the United Nations. The Kremlin official stressed that the fate of the deal is still in the hands of those with whom the United Nations should agree on the Russian part of the deal. Pesco affirmed there were results, but they were no finals, and the Moscow will try to, feel, to fully solve this problem during the next 60 days. On the Thursday, the Ugandan's Prime Minister Ye Ye Ondongo held a top-level meeting with the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov over the Ukrainian, uh, Ukraine Black Sea Green Deal. On a joint news conference in Moscow, Odongo told that he had urged parties involved to consider the depleta of many African countries who depend on grain for the weather and breath. Sergei Lavrov, however, said the next two months will help this decide to fade off the deal which allows Ukraine to ship grain towards the Black Sea. Regarding this, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on Wednesday said Moscow had agreed to extend the agreement for two months. On Thursday, Russia Defense Minister spokesperson Igor Konashenko said that the armed forces hit all targets in a series of strikes on Ukraine overnight after Kiev said it downed 29 out of 30 missiles launched by Moscow. Today, the armed forces of the Russian Federation carried out nighttime group strikes with long-range sea and air-based high-precision weapons against large depots of foreign weapons and equipment as well as enemy reservers. The goals were achieved. All assigned targets have been destroyed. As a result of the strikes, a significant stock of weapons and ammunition of the Ukrainian armed forces were destroyed, and the advancement of reservers of the areas of combat operation was also prevented. An explosion caused the arrival of 80 wagons with grain in the Russian peninsula of Crimea, reported today the chairman of the regional parliament, Vladimir Konstantinov. The official assured that the explosion occurred due to the intervention of unauthorized persons and the law enforcement agencies are working at the site. A Crimean railway statement on the situation added that recovery trains were sent to the site of the incident. For his part, the government of Crimea emphasized that the movement of electric trains was stopped on the sections between Semifripol and Sevastopol passengers so will be transferred to, their, to these stations by buses.
On Wednesday, Montana became the first U.S. state to ban TikTok. Will a law set to go into effect next year that fills debate over the impact and safety of the popular video web. The ban became law with the signature of Governor Greg Gianforte and Wilsford as a legal test of the national ban of the platform something congressmen in Washington are inclusively calling for. Brazilian President Luiz Ignacio Lula da Silva arrived in the Japanese city of Hiroshima to attend the G7 summit. The South American country participates as guests along with Australia, Comoros, the Cook Islands, India, Indonesia, South Korea and Vietnam. According to President Lula da Silva, Brazil's bilateral agenda will begin on Friday when he met with Australia Prime Minister Antony Albanese. The G7 is made up of what were once the world's most industrialized countries such as Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the UK and the US. Australians and Mauritian authorities have identified a large area in the Indian Ocean where they will focus the search for a captive Chinese fishing vessel, which report least sanks on Tuesday with 39 crew members. On Thursday, a spokesperson for the Australian Maritime Safety Authority told the Chinese state run Shuai News Agency that based on Dries modeling, a remote 12,000 square kilometers zone has been identified to search for a vessel, which so far has 39 people on board missing, including 17 Chinese. Mariners, 17 from Indonesia and 5 from the Philippines. The Sud English continues to grow. You can now tune in from 33 different African countries through StarSat, dial 461 and join our Latin American alternative broadcast. One final break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. On Thursday, Chinese President Xi Jinping hailed a new era of ties with Central Asia, kicking off a summit Beijing hopes will deepen relations with the strategically vital region. Held in the Asian Chinese city of Xi'an this week's meeting is of the milestone significance according to the authorities from the Asian Union. President Xi expressed he was confident that joint efforts will result in a successful summit and herald a new era of relations between China and Central Asia. This meeting is the first of its kind since the establishment of formal relations 31 years ago. Trump President Bashar al-Assad arrived in Saudi Arabia on Thursday to attend the summit of the Arab League Council, his first visit to the country since the beginning of the conflict in Syria in 2011. The 22 members' body received the recently reinstated in Syria and will kick off the summit is Friday in the Saudi city of Jara. Syria's acceptance into the Arab League is developing at a time when Damascus is normalizing its diplomatic relations with the states in the region. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, Palestinian President Mohamed Abbas and Lebanese uh, caretaker Prime Minister Najid Mikhari arrived in Yana on Thursday to participate in the Arab League Council meeting. In addition to preparing all technical and logistical matters for the summit venue and its media center, an intense organizing movement is reportedly taking place in Jara City from roads being degraded with the flags of the participating countries to the implementation of strict security measures appropriate for this kind of event. The leaders of Pakistan and Iran opened the first water market as part of the rapprochement between the two countries. Prime Minister of Pakistan, uh, Shabazz Sharif, and the President of Iran, uh, Ibrahim Raisi, inaugurated on Thursday a border market and a power grain as part of their first meeting after 10 years. 
Leaders also inaugurated a power line which will provide Iranian energy to several regions of Pakistan. Sharif and Raisi emphasize that both the nations seek to expand bilateral cooperation and consider the joint projects to be diplomatic and beneficial. The United Nations Aid Representative in Sudan declared on Thursday that multiple series of branches of the agreement reached by the NATO the nations uh, were in parties uh, to spread civilians and civilian infrastructure and to let in badly needed aid. The United Nations uh, Aid Sheriff uh, Martin Griffin welcomed the May 12 uh, declaration uh, signing in Saudi Arabia by the two sides uh, in Sudan's uh, bloody conflict uh, who vowed to refrain uh, from attacking humanitarians and liberating uh, this uh, purely needed aid. Marine Griffin uh, refers uh, to the Kansas reports of looting of food or warehouse of humanitarian aid organizations in Sudan. Is that the World Food Program, I think, announced yesterday that they had lost about $56 million worth of food stocks value in Sudan as a result of these activities. Uh, that's an enormous and shocking figure, a disgraceful figure in, in its own way. And there has obviously been a great worry on the part of the humanitarian agencies that to restock <laughs> is to restock places which will get looted. It was a place of greatest need when this started, um, you know, a month ago. I mean, it was a place of dire need and extraordinary insecurity and great fragility. Well, that's just, you know, in spades now. And added to that is the fact that it's different in different parts of Darfur, that the laying waste of Darfur, which has happened in the West, is not quite the same in the north, but it's also very unstable in the north. So you've got a very patchy picture. In Sudan, where clashes have so far displaced more than one million people to neighboring countries. The International Organization for Migration reported that some 883,130 people were displaced to leave their residential areas and had to relocate within the country. Another 253,000 people across the borders total totally almost 1.1 million. The Intergovernmental Authority on uh, Development points out that the army and the paramilitary forces are responsible for the situation because of their involvement in the war, so they will have to be held accountable for the, their actions. We have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Telesur English, I'm from the south of Manamarrero, and thank you for watching.